Hey everyone, Skull902 here, and today, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite films of all time, Ice Age. Released in 2002, this movie chronicles the adventure of three unlikely partners to brave the cold and return a human baby to his family. Sometime during the summer of 2003, my mom came home with a VHS tape she purchased, and later on that night, we of course watched it. To me, it was a hit, and still very much is. I used to watch that tape all the time, I loved it so much. Nowadays, I usually reserve it for my yearly Christmas schedule. I know it's not a Christmas film per se, but come on, all that snow makes it fitting enough for me. Anyway, if you feel so inclined, sit back and relax as I tell you why I love Ice Age. There are going to be spoilers in this video, so if you haven't watched the film, this is your chance to stop the video. With that said, let's begin. Firstly, I'd like to talk about the short Gone Nutty. It was included in the opening of the VHS tape, so I've got to touch on it briefly. I think the short is a great way for any first-time watcher to get a glimpse at some of the more zany moments of the film proper. It's fun, it's got some neat animation, I've always liked the shot where the acorn starts sinking in and Scrat's dilemma begins, it had a nice little joke near the end, it's a perfect showcase of Scrat's plight throughout the series. And with that out of the way, let's get into Ice Age. I believe writing to be the most important part of the process, so I'll save that part for last as always. Not to mention, I'll have a lot more to talk about in that department. But first, I want to make a quick mention of the visuals, sound, and the actors' performances. This was Blue Sky's first feature film, and I think they made a good impression with the visuals. Especially in environments like the snow, or when our heroes are taking the shortcut, as well as the cave scene. Things like the animal's fur or the human's hair don't look quite as good, but it fits enough with the art style. The film's score was done by David Newman, and all the tracks sound very nice, doing a good job keeping up with the film's tone, whether it be the fun, wacky bits or the more serious stuff. Nothing sounds out of place, and a lot of the music will still come to mind every now and then. Something else I like about the music is that there are a couple of variations on the film's main theme, which I think is a nice touch. Overall, the film treats my ears very well with its sound. Continuing on that note, we have the voice acting. Our main trio are voiced by Ray Romano, who plays Manny, John Leguizamo, who plays Sid, and Dennis Leary, who plays Diego. All three do an excellent job with their performances. The characters all sound exactly the way they need to, and I don't recall a line reading that sounded bad. That applies to the other characters as well. Whoever was in charge of casting picked a good group to work with. They all fit in with the feel of this movie, if that makes any sense. Not to mention Tara Strong was in this movie. She voiced the baby and this thing. Best actor ever. Give her a round of applause. With the more aesthetic stuff out of the way, I now want to get into the writing because believe me, it's some great stuff. I'm splitting my thoughts on this into two parts. First I'll talk about the plot, and then the characters. What I see in Ice Age is a film about companionship and loyalty. The three main characters all come from different walks of life and have to learn to deal with what makes them different to reach their end goal, returning the baby, named Roshan, home. The experience eventually turns all three into good friends after a harrowing adventure. Along the way, not only do they deal with each other, but also some dangerous situations. One thing I like about this film is that the writers were able to go from fun and zany to dramatic in a short amount of time without making it look jarring. A good example of this would be when the herd are chasing after Roshan in the icy shortcut, immediately followed by the cave scene. It felt like a good transition. This is also the case in the final confrontation between the herd and Soto's pack. They go from a nice little bit with Sid snowboarding and fooling the Sabres with a fake baby, then Manny blindsiding them with a huge surprise, to the moment where Soto and Diego slowly creep up on Manny before Diego tells Soto to leave the mammoth alone. Soto taking Diego out and then meeting his doom after a well-timed strike by Manny, and Diego being redeemed for originally plotting to kill Roshan with his pack. Even the reunion has a bit of tension as Roshan's father draws his spear on Manny before he's able to see his son and calls off the other humans before they can ambush Manny and Sid. And then we get the reunion between father and son, the trio all say goodbye, and Diego is revealed to be alright after the fight from earlier. Some might feel differently when it comes to Scrat's bits in the movie, but personally I don't question it at all and I think it shows the talent the writers had while making this film. It's an excellent story with incredible characters. Speaking of which, how about we talk about them now? First, I'll talk a bit about Soto's pack, aside from their leader. Zeke's amusingly insane, Oscar's kind of a douche, and Lenny's, well, fat. We don't see or hear much from them, but they serve their roles well. We've also got the extra characters like the Rhinos or Dodos that, even with their lack of importance to the story, are still entertaining and in some cases can even deliver some of the more quotable lines in the film. Soto, as the antagonist, also serves his role well. He's ruthless, intimidating, cold, and has a sensical motivation. Humans killed half of his pack, after all, but he definitely took his revenge plot way too far. 
As far as Roshan goes, well, he's a baby. It doesn't take too much for a baby to be well written. But he's still voiced by Tara Strong, so he's obviously the best character in the film. Give her another round of applause. Now on to the main trio. Sid's kind of a lovable loser. He's cowardly and talkative to the point of annoyance, but he makes up for it with his humor and commitment to his friends. Manny is strong and tough-willed. He doesn't screw around and doesn't take anyone's crap. But through his tough exterior, we do see a softer side, which I'll talk about a little later. Diego is full of skill and determination. He's agile, and I think he's the most intelligent of the three, with his being able to trick Manny and Sid, as well as his penchant for tracking. Something I didn't notice as a kid and think is a really nice thing about their dynamic is that at the start of their journey, they're all doing it for different reasons and through character development, slowly start to do it all for the same reason. Sid is through and through doing it out of compassion. He is literally a mammal that cares. His family did abandon him at the start of the movie, so he doesn't want to see the same thing happen to Roshan. He doesn't need to be convinced to help bring the baby home, and while he is a goofball and uses Roshan to try flirting with a couple of female sloths, you can tell his main thing is looking out for the baby and making sure he goes back to the humans safely. Honestly, I think it makes him the glue that keeps the herd together. Diego starts the adventure doing it out of deceit. The only reason he cares about the baby at first is to bring him back to the Sabres and prove himself worthy to his pack as a hunter. He's the last of the three to turn toward compassion, which I think starts after seeing Manny interact with Roshan during the cave scene, is strengthened when Manny saves him from falling into the river of lava, and is solidified during the campfire scene, which leads him to admit that he set the other two up and apologize for it. Manny is the most complex of the three by far. His character arc is filled with so many subtleties, it's honestly amazing the things I didn't notice when I was younger. It all starts in this moment of shock when he sees this human woman clinging on to life and her child, instinctively stops Roshan from falling back into the river, and then turning away when he comes back from the shock. When he's convinced by Sid to bring him back to his home, he's doing it out of guilt, and that'll become evident later. No matter what he feels about other creatures, it just plain isn't right to leave this infant for dead out in the middle of nowhere. Manny's motivation starts to change when he takes the baby back from Sid after the sloth's aforementioned attempt at courting, and then the cave scene solidifies it. He looks at the painting of two mammoths and their child and imagines a scenario where a group of humans kill the child and its mother. It's implied that this happened to Manny shortly before the beginning of the movie. Now it makes far more sense that he was walking towards certain death at the beginning and immediately turned away from Sid when he asked whether Manny had a family. When I was a kid, I always kind of thought that he was shocked by the thought of humans doing that to a mammoth family, but now that I'm older, I'm seeing something else entirely. He bonds with Roshan after he notices the baby also looking at the painting, and there's when you can tell he's in it not to get Sid or Diego off his back, but for Roshan's safety. It can be seen that he cares about the others as well when he saves Diego from falling, explaining that that's what you do in a herd. You look out for each other. It needs to be said again. The way the writers did all this was amazing, and I can't admire it enough. It makes the herd's friendship believable. On the surface, it's simple enough for kids to understand, and then when you get older, you notice all the intricacies. Very well done indeed. In conclusion, I think Ice Age is a great movie with a perfect balance of comedy and drama, and would recommend it to anyone who hasn't seen it. The film is absolutely beautiful with no shortage of great moments, and introduced me to a couple of things too. I believe this was the first time I had ever heard Jack Black, and this movie was my introduction to the song Send Me On My Way by Rusted Root, with its fantastic usage for the montage scene. I absolutely love that song and forever will associate it with this movie. The characters are superb, the story is excellently handled, the soundtrack and visuals hold up, and that's why it's one of my favorite films. I could go on, but I think I've talked this movie up to you all enough. I hope you enjoyed my look at the film. I've been Skull902, thank you for watching, and have yourselves a wonderful day.